We were looking down here from A1, from that direction. In this picture over here, we're looking from A2. That's the same intersection. There was just a sea of unburned paper and dust. And then this car park went into spontaneous combustion. It appeared to go into spontaneous combustion. So don't make any assumptions. We don't know what was happening, but you can see orange looking, what looks like flames, something glowing in there. Now we're going to look from B1 and B2 positions as well as from C at what's referred to as the spire. There's that clump of core columns from Tower 1 that seems to remain just a little bit after the rest and then turns to dust. I'm sort of expecting that that is, or suspicious that that is right above where those 14 people survived who thought they would have been crushed and looked up and saw blue sky. Here's Tower 1 coming apart and it peels away like peeling a banana and left with these little little spire sticking up. That's about 700 feet tall. It's got to be pretty strong to be standing unsupported that tall. Here's Building 7, which is a 47-story building. It's like 650 feet tall, approximately. This has got to be over that. And here's a closer view. And then it starts to drop down and kind of faints. Mm -hmm. Turns to dust. Now, if that thing tipped over, it, it would take out a few blocks worth of buildings. How's it going to go straight down? You got a 700-foot hole in the ground to drop it into? Okay, for argument's sake, let's, let's pretend we do have a 700-foot hole we're going to drop it into. And you're saying that that's uh, dust that shook off it that settled back here? That's blue sky around that. That's not dust gradually settling. If dust is that fine, to hang in the air, it, it wouldn't be settled on it in that amount of time. So we know it doesn't have much time at all for dust to settle on it. And right after that, here it is from a slightly different angle. It'll just faint. Just faints and dustifies. Pretty neat trick. Now we're going to look at still frames from yet a different position. Remember it peels away like a banana, leaves it exposed. Blue sky, crisp edges. That's not dust settling on it. And then it comes to the point where it no longer has crisp edges and dustifies. Now we're going to look at it from across the river, yet a different angle. You can see it turning to dust. You know, it isn't tipping over in any particular direction. Oh, let me back up on that one. Oops, I backed up too fast. Okay. See how the dust cloud is sort of wrapping around this building? It's a little bit more wrapped around. So you can tell there's not much time has passed between those two images. Another one of my terms is lather. I like lather in a shower, but you're not going to confuse that with what happened on 9-11. <laughs> but it's a familiar word. It's a lot easier to remember than characteristic 2579-7A. So it's actually more scientific than an arbitrary term like that because you can identify it. Didn't it look like that Alka-Seltzer effect that was lather kind of pouring out? Well, it turns out the building's lathered up too. From ground to roof, one side and one side only. Not only that, this is building seven, the north face and we have uh, busted out windows, but the, the fumes don't want to come out there. I'm just using fumes as generic, not saying smoke. We don't know what this is, but from ground to roof. And the wind that day was only like seven, eight, to, or eight miles per hour. 
So it wasn't a stiff breeze, and you can see that by some wafting out the space. No, no. Go low to the corner. Oh. Doesn't come out this window. Comes out that one, but, but uh, comes out this one down here, but not up there. It's very energized. If it was uh, smoke from a fire inside, first of all, it wouldn't come out of the entire face of the building. And second of all, you have a bottleneck there. It goes for the path of least resistance. And you'd have something coming out there. It's not pushing out. It's being sucked out, it looks like. We don't need to know what caused it to just be able to observe what's happening. That does not look like a fire pouring out a window. And that poured out of the building all afternoon for seven hours. That's a lot of material. Maybe that has to do with why it didn't make a thud when it hit the ground. So we're going to talk about the dust rollout. It's another interesting issue. This guy's running down the street, dust cloud chasing him. A wall of dust. A wall of dust? If, if junk slammed to the ground, the dust rolls out from the ground. It doesn't come as a wall. Now, I saw this, it kind of made me think of getting the, the whole building, grinding it up and, and turning it into dust within some like glass walls. So you have all this froth in there and then you take away the sideboards and let it just move outward. Like it was already turned to dust before it was cut loose. And as it went down the street, it ran over people, didn't even burn, just left them covered with dust. This one is uh, particularly interesting, the contrast. Whitehead. But uh, these people were hit with dust, like you can see where his tie had been. The dust rolled a particular distance and then went up. Bob and Bree were in that apartment there and it was wonderful of them to have shared their video. They took a video of this dust cloud rolling out. It didn't quite touch the window and went up. Never touched the window, like within an inch or two. It was amazing. Oh my God. Oh my Oh, baby, hold Lily. Oh, my God. Come on, let's go to the other room. Is this dangerous? I think it's just, think it's just smoke. Is the air conditioner turned off in the room? And the, and the window's closed in the People bedroom? near the area are in absolute crazy situation. The entire top of the building just collapsed. The entire building, building, just the building, building just collapsed. We're going to leave because the smoke is coming right at us. Obviously, this is a devastating development in our history. They're gone. The World Trade Center is, is no more. We do not know at this point uh, the extent of injuries or casualties. Uh, how many people were in these buildings trying to get out? We've seen some gut wrenches. Oh, people are running away. They're running away. What are they going to do? You guys got to run away. You see the obvious. Look at the right, plume. Right I think it's going to be blown away. No, no, it's the wind is being blown away. Horrific, incredible. Not to do with Tuesday morning. You are looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center where just a few minutes ago, within the last minute actually, the second Twin Tower collapsed. Just to recap, if you're just joining us around 8.42 Eastern Time this morning here in New York City, a plane crashed into the right Twin Tower of the World Trade Center about two miles away up the building, leaving a huge gaping hole, a huge fire. 
and tons of billowing smoke. About 25 minutes later, a second jet, believed to be a 727 or a 737, then crashed on the second twin. All these people running away. But the dust rolls out a particular distance. What would explain that? Well, I'm thinking if you throw rocks, they go pretty big distance. If you throw flour, dust, it doesn't go very far at all because it has a lot of surface area per mass, a lot of wind resistance, so dust doesn't go very far. But if you throw rocks and they become dust in midair, at a particular rate, they'll reach maximum distance and stop going up. I mean, stop going out and then if they're fine enough, they'll start going up. This dust went up. You can imagine people who were down in this area, total blackout. 100% of the sunlight was blocked out. This is a view, a couple of the um, frames from their video. You can see the dust rising. It rose like he spread it. Never hit their window. Just rose up. Really spooky looking. And other types of things kept breaking down and rising up. Here's water being misted onto what was left of ground zero, what was left of the debris field. And they brought in wet dirt, dumped it on it. This was Halloween, like six weeks later, after 9-11. This isn't fire. That's not what fire does. Wet dirt, dirt tracks. Also, if it were hot, you wouldn't put your uh, hydraulic equipment out there. Hydraulics uh, have per permanent damage if operated above like 82 centigrade. But that dust went up, or whatever it was, that, those fumes, I call it fumes just generically, like it was on a mission to go up. It almost looks like a funnel cloud. Dark stuff went westward. The whitish stuff went south and up to a certain altitude and then sort of wafts away. This is a close-up of that.